Boudicca's Revolt When the warrior queen of Britannia conquered Rome, Roman rule over the newly conquered provinces of Britannia was characterized by a brutal, oppressive, and exploitative policy. Under the leadership of Boudicca, the warrior queen of the Iceni, the Britons violently revolted against their oppressors. Rome's gradual and piecemeal conquest of Britain began in AD 43, as various tribes were subjugated one by one. Some tribes choose to ally with Rome to preserve their independence. Prasutagus was one of eleven kings who surrendered to the Roman Emperor Claudius after the initial conquest of Britannia in 43 AD. As a result, he was officially installed as King of the Iceni and became an ally of Rome. His long reign was remembered as an especially prosperous period. However, when Prasutagus passed away, his decision to name the Roman Emperor Nero as co along with his two daughters, had an unexpected outcome. Instead of ensuring the safety of her kingdom and family, this choice set the stage for the mass uprising led by Boudicca. Boudicca and the damage caused by the Romans Boudicca's story begins with her husband, Persidicus, who named the Roman Emperor Nero as co-heir with his two daughters in his will. This act of deference was intended to protect his lands and family from Roman greed. However, the local Roman authorities completely ignored the will and took possession of Prasutagus's lands and properties. Decianus Cadus, procurator of the province, not only annulled the will, but also monitored the prompt repayment of previous loans that the British leaders had made to the Romans. This harsh treatment didn't stop there. Roman centurions raided Prasutagus's house in search of the money, subjecting his wife, Boudicca, to beatings and his two daughters to violent abuse. Boudicca was a woman of royal descent, known for her grandeur. She was tall, with long fawn hair that fell below her waist, and her voice was strong and rough, reflecting her determined personality. Wearing a large gold necklace, possibly a torque, and a colorful tunic secured with a brooch, she represented all British nobility and pride. Faced with the suffering inflicted on her and her daughters, Boudicca was not intimidated. On the contrary, this powerful woman decided to rebel against Roman oppression. Her revolt was motivated by the search for justice and the defense of her people's freedom. Under Boudicca's leadership, the British tribes united and launched a violent campaign against the Romans. Boudicca's revolt was a remarkable demonstration of resistance and courage, and the memory of it endures as a symbol of the struggle for autonomy and the autonomy of native cultures in the face of foreign rule. Her story echoes through the centuries as a motivator of the strength of human will and the ability to face seemingly insurmountable adversity. Boudicca's Summons after the devastating Roman attack against Boudicca and her daughters, the Iceni began to conspire with neighboring tribes, including the Trinovans and others. Quickly, Boudicca was chosen as the leader of the revolt. Her oratory skills were considered impressive. Determined to leave nothing to chance, she also resorted to acts of divination to boost the army's morale and, hopefully, ensure victory. According to one story, she freed a hair from within the folds of her dress and interpreted the direction it followed as the path set for the army by Andraste, a British goddess of victory. The timing of the revolt was meticulously planned. The Roman governor of Great Britain, Gaius Suetonius Paulinus, was on the other side of the island leading a military campaign. The British rebels had sought refuge on the island of Mona, present-day Anglesey, North Wales, a Druid stronghold. While Boudicca began her revolt, Suetonius and most of the Roman forces in Britain were busy with this campaign. This fact was intended to allow Boudicca's revolt to spread and destroy all the nursing Roman forces that had been left behind in fragmented form until the Romans finished their campaign and marched back across the island. Anger and Rebellion Against Rome The rebellion led by Boudicca first targeted the city of Camulodunum, currently known as Colchester. Before this, Camulodunum was the capital of the Trinovates, however, the Romans conquered most of the land and turned the city into a colony designed to reward Roman veterans for their service. The locally protected Britons faced abuse from both Roman veterans and other colonists, being forced to finance the construction of a temple in honor of Emperor Claudius, whose reign marked the Roman invasion of Britain. This led to growing resentment among the Britons towards Camulodunum. As Boudicca's rebellion approached, the inhabitants of Camulodunum asked the procurator Decianus Cadus for assurances. However, he only begrudged a small troop of 200 additional knights. Boudicca's great army invaded the city, 
devastating everything in its path. A bronze statue of Emperor Nero, which probably stood in front of Claudius' temple, was toppled and decapitated, with his head taken as a trophy. The last defenders took shelter in the temple of Claudius, where they held out for another two days before being invaded by the Britons. Modern archaeological research confirms the city's extensive destruction caused by Boudicca's rebellion. A Legion in Londinium During the attack on Camulodunum, Commander Quintus Petilius Cerealis, brother-in-law of the future Emperor Vespasian, tried to relieve the city. Cerealis played a crucial leadership role in the Year of the Four Emperors in the Bad Avian Revolt. At that time, he commanded Legio IX Hispania during a Boudicca revolt. Boudicca's already victorious army intercepted Cerealis's forces before they could reach the ruins of Camulodunum. In the ensuing battle, all the Roman infantrymen were killed, and Cerealis barely managed to escape back to the Roman camp with what was left of his cavalry. After this defeat, Decinus Cadus, the man whose actions started this chain of events, fled to Gaul. Meanwhile, Suetonius and his forces quickly returned from their victorious campaign against Mona. Boudicca's next target appeared to be the prosperous city of Londinium, founded shortly after the Roman conquest in 43 AD. However, Suetonius quickly concluded that he did not have sufficient numbers to defend the city and decided to abandon it. When Boudicca's army arrived, all those who had not evacuated were massacred and the city was burned to the ground. Modern archaeological excavations have revealed that the destruction extended to the city's suburbs on the south bank of the River Thames. Suetonius rallies the Romans. After the devastation of Londinium, the army led by Boudicca advanced towards the town of Verulamium, modern Santa Albans. However, due to limited archaeological evidence, the full extent of the damage caused is still not completely clear. According to historical sources, the number of people killed by Boudicca's forces in the three cities is estimated to have ranged between 70,000 and 80,000. These numbers were exceptionally high, as the British showed no interest in taking slaves or prisoners, which occurred in the death of all those found. While Boudicca attacked and devastated Londinium and Verulamium, the Roman commander Suetonius worked to gather as many soldiers as possible. Legio IX Hispania had been defeated by Boudicca's forces previously, leaving it unfit for combat, and the prefect of the Legio according to Augusta did not resist or was unwilling to join Suetonius' army. However, Suetonius managed to gather a contingent that included Legio Decimo Gemina and Legio 20th Valeria Victrix, as well as several auxiliary units. This gave him an army of around 10,000 men to face Boudicca's considerably larger force, which, although exaggerated in sources, was estimated at around 230,000 to 300,000 soldiers. Note, it is important to point out that the numbers mentioned in historical sources regarding the size of Boudicca's forces may be exaggerated and therefore subject to debate and different understandings among scholars. Battle for Britain The exact location of the battle between Boudicca's Britons and Suetonius Romans remains unknown. Historical sources describe the battlefield as being in a gorge, with woods mentioned behind the Roman position. Historically, the battlefield is believed to be located along the Roman road known as Waddling Street, possibly close to modern High Cross in Leicestershire, at the junction of Waddling Street and Fosway. In their configuration, the British lines extended far beyond the Romans, placing the Romans in great energy demand. Boudicca, leader of the Britons, addressed his army from his carriage and gave a brief speech before ordering the attack. However, to reach the Romans, Boudicca's army had to pass through the gorge, which forced them to group together in a heavy and compact mass. As the mass advanced, the Romans launched missiles at them, seeking to weaken their lines. When the Romans finally exhausted their goods, they advanced in a wedge-shaped formation, charging at the Britons. The Britons, in disarray, attempted to retreat, but found themselves blocked by their own wagons which were positioned behind the army as a defensive measure. Driven by anger resulting from the destruction of their cities and the deaths of so many Roman civilians, Suetonius soldiers enjoyed no pity from any British man, woman, child, or animal. They did in a ruthless and destructive victory. This battle is a vivid example of the fierce fighting between the Britons led by Boudicca and the Romans led by Suetonius, as well as the devastating consequences that can result in historical conflicts.
Aftershocks The fate of Boudicca and the developments of the rebellion After Boudicca's defeat, his career was brief, although historical sources present conflicting versions of his fate. According to one narrative, she chose suicide by ingesting poison. In another version, her death would have been caused by an illness, followed by a grand funeral. Meanwhile, Suetonius led a brutal, punitive campaign against the tribes who had joined Boudicca in rebellion. However, upon learning that Suetonius' actions could incite a new revolt, Emperor Nero decided to replace him with a more conciliatory governor, Catus de Sionis, who was stripped of his charge and replaced after his flight to Gaul. Interestingly, there are no records of the fate of Boudicca's two daughters. Boudicca's revolt, although brief, had a significant impact that made the Roman Emperor Nero consider abandoning Britain. Some speculate that this may have been the goal of the Britons, who were perhaps inspired by a similar revolt in Roman Germany led by Arminius. Despite this, Suetonius' victory confirmed Roman control over the province, even though the Romans still faced many years of arduous campaigns and never completely conquered the island of Britain. Boudicca's Legacy Today Ultimately, Boudicca's revolt was considered a failure. However, its history was recorded by the Roman historian Tacitus, one of Rome's leading authorities on historical matters. Thus, despite the passage of time, Boudicca's memory has never been completely forgotten. In Britain, she continues to be mentioned in medieval chronicles, such as in the 6th century work of Gildas. Boudicca was later reintroduced by Polydor Virgil and Raphael Hollenshed in the middle of the 16th century. Shortly thereafter, she became associated with Elizabeth I, who in 1588 sought to defend Great Britain from the Spanish Armada. In the early modern period, there emerged a renewed interest in their life and dress. In the Victorian era, this interest in Boudicca exploded, and she appeared in poems, paintings, statues, and even ships were named after her. Suffragettes also adopted Boudicca as one of their symbols in the early 20th century. Currently, permanent exhibitions about Boudicca can be found in some of England's most important museums, such as the Museum of London and Colchester Castle, Museum and Verulamium Museum. There's even a 58 kilometers trail called Boudicca's Way, which runs through the Norfolk countryside. So, what did you think of today's video? Did you already know Boudicca's story? What impressed you most? Let us know your thoughts on this topic, as we would love to read and respond to your comments below. And if you liked this video and haven't subscribed to our channel yet, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of the intriguing videos we post every week. And if you want to take advantage and learn a little more, be sure to click on one of these videos that we are suggesting for you. Remember, to know the past is to understand the present and prepare for the future. Until the next video.